Hey, I'm Pete Barak, and excited to bring, uh, hopefully, a word of encouragement to all of you today, straight from the scriptures. You ever have those moments when you're, you're reading the Word of God, and it just grabs you, and then kind of doesn't let you go? And even when you try to read a different section, or kind of move on beyond that verse, you can't, and you kind of have to keep going back to it. And then every time you find yourself talking about the scriptures, you keep referring to this particular passage, and it's the one you end up texting to all your friends and family. Maybe that's just me, but uh, that's what's happened with me for this particular passage, and I, I wanted to share it with you today. It's from Colossians. Colossians chapter 1, verses 11 through 14. And I'd encourage you to hear this as an encouragement straight from the mouth of God to all of you today, whether you're in, in quarantine, not in quarantine, lonely, around family, uh, you know, fearful, hopeful, wherever you are today, hear this from the voice of the Lord. May you be strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. St. Paul often, when you read his works, has these little four verses, three verse sections where he just kind of lays out the good news in a, in a new way. And he repeats these themes over and over and over again because it's the heart of the gospel. What's the heart of the gospel? It's right here. He, the Father, has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the, the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. That right there is the heart of why we follow Jesus Christ. That is the heart of what he has done for us. That the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, of course, working together in both a mysterious and tangible way, bring human beings out of the dominion of darkness and into the kingdom of the Son, into Jesus' kingdom, through redemption and the forgiveness of our sins. And of course, we know that to, to make that journey from darkness to light is an act of faith, but there's also some tangible expressions of that, right? Conversion, metanoia, the Greek word meaning to turn away from our former lives, to say no to sin and darkness, and to say yes to Jesus in light, to move from the narrow way that leads to destruction, excuse me, I, I, I switched that up, to move from the broad way that moves to destruction, and the scripture says that many there are who are following it, to the narrow way, which leads to life, and unfortunately, Jesus says, few are finding it. Well, the point is, is that the Father, through the Son, wants to help as many people move from the broad way to the narrow way as possible, to move out of one kingdom into a new kingdom, to be immigrants from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the Son, where we then have full participation in the life of God, ultimately in heaven. And where, what is that? It's the inheritance of the saints in light. We are qualified to share in that inheritance through what God has done in us through Jesus Christ in the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And so Paul, what he, one of the things he's saying is, uh, live in this reality, remember this reality, believe in this reality so that we have, through his glorious might, all endurance and patience with joy. You know, uh, these, these last few weeks have definitely strained my joy, or they've threatened my joy. Not because I don't actually in some ways enjoy uh, some of the things of being home with the family. There's some really great things about that. But when you look at the financial ramifications of this, when you look at some of the, the friends and family we've known who've gotten sick and even have passed away, when I think about my wife going into the hospital a couple times a week as a nurse and serving people with who are suffering from this virus, and that threatens my, my joy and my peace. And um, just the endurance of things being different and maybe a little less money here or a job being threatened there or, you know, all, all the various factors that could rob us of our joy right now. There's no question. This is a, t a season, a time where without endurance, without patient uh, belief and faith in what God has done for us, we could easily despair. We could even 
drift back into the kingdom of darkness. And what Paul is saying right now is to remember to whom you belong. Remember where your citizenship is now. It is no longer the kingdom of darkness. It is the kingdom of the Son because of the action of the Father in the power of the Holy Spirit. And that reality and the reality of the inheritance that both awaits us at the end of our life, but that we can lay hold of now through the indwelling of grace, through the the outpouring of grace that the Lord wants to give us, that reality should create in us, can create in us, if we cooperate with it, an unshakable joy that allows us to endure patiently whatever comes our way. This is supernatural. This is impossible on our own. Just like it's impossible to change in our citizen card for the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light strictly on our own power. We are saved, no question, by faith, through the sacraments, through conversion, through action, but by the grace that that is uh, bestowed on us by a supernatural action of God. And that action is real, it's powerful, and can be sustaining if we cooperate with it. So today, I'd invite you to just read this and just say, okay, Lord, strengthen me with all power according to his glorious might. So not my might, not my power, but the, the, the power of God so that I can endure and be patient with joy, remembering the glorious inheritance that awaits me, that is accessible even to me now, that the saints in light experience because of what God has done for me. And what has he done for me? What is the Christian joy? What is the trumpet blast of our message? We were once dead and now we are alive. Just as Jesus was once dead and he rose again. And that same life is yours and is mine through faith, through repentance, through redemption, through the forgiveness of our sins and cooperation with that grace. This is who we are as Christians. This is our song. This is our message. Let's live in it. Let's remind ourselves in it, and let's be faithful even in times of crisis. God bless you.